What's up everybody, it's Coding Jesus, and in today's video we're going to be talking about a very fundamental data type, Boolean. So without further ado, let's jump into Boolean. Okay, so you're new to programming, you're new to C++, and you're asking yourself, what the heck's Boolean? Well, have you ever asked yourself a yes or no question? I'm sure you have. Uh, for example, did I run into the rain yesterday and play with a ball, yes or no, right? You either have a yes or a no, it's a binary choice. And Boolean really encapsulates the result of a binary choice. Is this blah, 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 blah? Are these two people blah, 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 blah? Does he have blah, 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 blah? So Boolean is a data type that is used to capture that binary choice, yes or no. So let's take a look at how we can actually initialize a Boolean. So we can use brace initialization to go ahead and initialize a Boolean. As you can see here, we have two examples. We can either set the value of a Boolean to true or false. It's binary, there's nothing in between. Okay, so on our first line, we set B1 to true. In our second line, we set B2 to false. Now, if you're not familiar with brace initialization, which was introduced in C++11, what you can also do is use the equal operator to actually set the result of a value to either true or false. The, the, the result of a variable to be specific to either true or false. So as you can see here, we initially used brace, in, brace initialization to set B1 to true. We later set B1 to false. We can also default initialize a Boolean. And like a character's default initialization is a null terminator, an integer's default initialization is zero, so too a Boolean's default initialization is false. So as you can see here, the fourth line, B3, is actually initialized to false. All right, so, so how else can we use a Boolean? Well, we can also actually use the exclamation operator to negate a given true or false, right? So we can initialize B1 to false by initializing it to true but negating that. So passing in the value of true and the negation of true is false, so B1 will be initialized to false. I do the exact same thing to B2 to show you that we can do it the other way around. So we pass in false, but we negate it with the exclamation operator, and therefore B2 is actually initialized to true. Now we're going to actually take a look at printing a Boolean value. So here we're using true and false, but we can as easily just use a variable if we wanted to, a Boolean variable representing either true and false. So when we print out true, what we'll actually see in the standard output is one. When we print out false, we'll actually see zero. Now we can actually change that such that we can see the actual word true and the actual word false when we go ahead and print out either a Boolean variable or the value true or false. We can do so by going ahead and using std bool alpha. So we're going to feed std bool alpha to C out. Okay. What happens is when we then go ahead and print out true and then false, what you'll see is the actual word true and false being printed to the screen. Now we can actually do both an explicit and implicit conversion from an integral, integral type to a Boolean. As you can see at the beginning here, I'm using a brace initialization to initialize a Boolean value with an integer. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell coding Jesus, how does that work? Well, this is something called explicit conversion. I'm initializing the value of a data type that will store a Boolean with an integer. Now in C++, any number that isn't zero is considered true. All right, so let's take a look at some example functions or how we write functions that would return a Boolean. Usually when you're reading other people's code, you'll see some functions that are called are or is. You can assume safely, if you don't see the return type, of course, that these functions are actually Boolean returning functions. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, when you're thinking of the question you'd ask to get a binary return value or a binary answer from somebody, it's most likely going to be is or are. For example, are you going to the mall tomorrow? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. So any function that you see that starts with either is or are is most likely going to return a Boolean value. And it's good practice to name your functions this way when you are returning a Boolean. All right, guys, now you're probably thinking, okay, coding Jesus, I understand what a byte is, but I, I don't know how big it is. How big is a byte? I mean, I know a 32-bit integer is four bytes, and in each byte, I have eight bits. So shouldn't a Boolean occupy a byte? But I'm confused coding Jesus because a Boolean is only true or false. Why do I need an entire byte to represent a one or a zero? Well, that's a good question. The answer for that is that every data type in C++ must be addressable. 
and must be able to hold an address. And the smallest unit of operation that you can have in memory is a byte. Of course, a byte is made up of bits, but you can't create a pointer to a bit. You can create a pointer to a byte. So a Boolean in C++ is at minimum byte-sized. That's because, once again, there is no data type that can be smaller than a byte, and only a byte is addressable. You can create a pointer to a byte, but not a bit. Remember that, and you'll be golden. Okay, guys, well, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this format. If you like this content, guys, smash the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button for more to hear the gospel of coding Jesus first. We have a Discord, it's in the description box below. And if you want to meet with me one-on-one -on -one for career advice, for resume reviews, I have an entire series on that. You can go ahead and look at the Calendly link in the description box below and jump on a call with me. Thanks for listening, guys. Cheers.